to be back. Siesta Key is a barrier island off the Gulf Coast of Florida. With its wide beaches and miles of soft, white, powdery sand, it's easy to see why Siesta Key is consistently ranked among the top beach destinations in the U.S. In addition to its beaches, Siesta Key is also home to Siesta Village, a small but charming village offering great food, drinks, and entertainment for vacationers and locals alike. Today we are on Siesta Key and we're going to show you how we like to spend a day on this beautiful island. Some of you may only know of Siesta Key from the MTV reality TV show, but we know it as being a small but fun beach town with amazing wide powdery sand beaches. So come along with us to our first stop, which is breakfast. But first, for those of you who aren't familiar with the location of Siesta Key, it lies just to the west of Sarasota, Florida, and is approximately 50 miles to the south of our home in St. Petersburg. The route to Siesta Key from St. Petersburg will have you crossing Tampa Bay on the magnificent Sunshine Skyway Bridge the longest cable-stayed concrete bridge in the world. It reaches a maximum height of 430 feet. On this beautiful spring day, we enjoyed the amazing bay and gulf views, which can be seen along the entirety of the four mile bridge. Now let's get back to our search for some brunch. The search began by walking along Ocean Boulevard. Ocean Boulevard runs north and south down the center of Siesta Village and is where you can find the majority of the shops and restaurants on Siesta Key. On this day, we particularly enjoyed the relaxing island sounds of the steel pan band at the hub. We were happy to find a brunch spot with open seating just a couple blocks away at the Village Cafe. We found this cafe to offer a great selection of both breakfast and lunch items, and of course, Skylar's brunch favorite, the Bloody Mary. That is spicy. I did ask him to make it spicy, and he made it quite spicy. It's good though. Skylar ordered a traditional breakfast of bacon, egg, fruit and toast, <laughs> while I went with the less traditional pastrami smoked salmon. With the first requirement of the day checked off the list, it was on to the second, which was coffee. And we couldn't have been more excited to get back to one of our favorite coffee spots. Along the way, we came across a mural which we took as a sign that we were on the right path. When we arrived at our beloved coffee shop, we were surprised to find that the former Lilu Coffee had been replaced by a new coffee shop known as Mojo Ryzen Coffee Company. But being fans of classic rock music and The Doors, we were excited to explore the new Doors-inspired coffee shop. Upon entering Mojo Ryzen, we were really impressed with the new design of the space. We were a bit relieved to find that the ownership had not changed and that Mojo Ryzen was still owned by the owners of Gilligan's Island Bar, which is located right next door. More importantly, we were happy to find that Mojo Ryzen was serving up amazing quality coffee and pastries, just as Lilu did. With delicious brunch and coffees checked off the list, we were ready for the beach. But first, we had to find parking. We are really thankful we brought our scooters today because there is no parking at the beach. We finally did find parking about a mile away on a side street, and now we don't have to walk all the way back. After a quick scooter ride from our parking spot near the village, we arrived at Siesta Beach. We made it to the 
Beach here on Siesta. It's about 1 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon right now, so it's definitely prime beach time. There's no spots available for vehicles in the parking lot, but thankfully we're on our scooters and we had no problem finding spots for those. We do want to mention that parking for the beach here is free, so I'd say it's pretty common for people to park in the beach area and stay all day. So it's definitely a bit busy on the beach around the main entrance and the concession stands right now, but the great thing about Siesta is that if you're willing to just walk a little ways, since the beach is so long and wide, you won't have any problem finding some space for yourself. So today we're going to show you some footage from the main beach access area that's pretty busy, but we'll also show you an area that's not quite as busy, just a short walk away. It's great to be back. As to be expected, the beach at the main entrance was a very popular place on this warm and sunny weekend afternoon. But even at this location, we still found an abundance of space as we got further away from the water. So we've taken you to quite a few beaches on this channel, but Siesta still has the softest sand of any beach we've ever been to. It's like powdered sugar. We've been to beaches in Florida and the Caribbean and Mexico and no beach has sand quite like Siesta. After spending around an hour at the beach at the main entrance, we were ready to find a less crowded part of the beach. This led us to public beach access number 11, which is only about 400 yards from the main access. After a quick walk to the beach, we enjoyed some time in the water, which was a comfortable 80 degrees on this early May afternoon. The water feels great. And while there were still plenty of people around, we were happy to find this section of the beach to be significantly less busy. And as you can see, there's still quite a few people, but whereas at the main entrance area where you had to walk about 50 yards from the water to find some open space, here you only have to walk about 10 yards. If you do come to Siesta, you may notice that there are no beach bars or restaurants on the beach. It's all houses and condos, which makes it a little different than most of the beaches that we go to in Pinellas County. Feels nice, doesn't it? Yeah. We really enjoyed our time out on Siesta Beach, but it is hot and we are ready to get out of the sun. We're gonna head back to the village to find some shade, some cold drinks, and hopefully some live music. We'll see you there. When we returned to Siesta Village, we were happy to hear some familiar music and soon discovered a couple of our favorite local musicians were playing at Gilligan's. We quickly grabbed a table inside where we enjoyed some cold drinks, chips, and fresh green salsa while listening to Donati and Yoder. These amazing musicians play in Siesta Key frequently, and we highly recommend anyone who's visiting to check them out. After the musicians packed up, it was time to move on to the next stop, but not before testing out Skylar's ring toss skills outside of Gilligan's. Our mission to find live music and cold drinks was a success. Now we're off to my favorite place to have martinis on the island. We'll see you there. Our mission to find martinis took us just a couple of blocks down the road to the Blase Cafe and Martini Bar, a local favorite for food and drinks on the island since 1997. We were happy to find that we had made it in time for a happy hour and we quickly ordered a couple martinis while checking out some of the unique decor. I went with the strawberry shortcake martini, while Skylar ordered a traditional dirty martini. Both 
both were delicious and smooth and probably went down a little too easily. So it's getting about that time where we would normally be looking for dinner, but Skylar said he wasn't hungry and he was gonna let me choose. So I chose dessert and our first stop is right over there at Meanie's Donuts. A longtime staple of Siesta Key, Meanie's offers freshly made mini donuts, which include the classic style and nine types of specialty donuts. The donuts come in orders of either 6, 12, or 19, and include a variety of delicious toppings, such as cheesecake, cream, peanut butter cups, and even apple pie. All right, Jamie, what did you get? I got turtle cheesecake mini donuts without the nuts on top because they were just peanuts and I wasn't that. They look right. really good. They do. the mini donuts and they were delicious but part two of my dessert is actually at a place we've never been before it's been out here on the island for years and we've wanted to try it ever since we saw their episode of shark tank and it is sub-zero nitrogen ice cream so we'll see you there as any of you shark tank fans out there may recall the sub-zero founders were not able to get a shark to invest when they appeared on the show back in 2013 but the media exposure proved to be very beneficial, as Sub-Zero has grown from 18 franchises in 2013 to over 50 franchises today. During our trip to Sub-Zero, we learned that their patented process uses liquid nitrogen to flash freeze its ice cream, which is made fresh right before your eyes. The process is not only fun to watch, but it also eliminates the need for freezer space, which is needed to store large amounts of ice cream. And we should probably mention that the process produces some amazingly delicious and creamy ice cream too. During our visit, we ordered the Sonic Screwdriver, one of the location's rotating specials, which includes blueberries, huckleberries, cheesecake, marshmallows, and cayenne pepper. The flavors blend really well together. Is there anything different about it from normal ice cream? It's ice cream. It's just good ice cream, huh? Yeah. We hope you enjoyed seeing some of our favorite spots out here on Siesta Key. There's a lot of other great places out here on the island and we had planned on taking you to a couple more but we just didn't have the appetite today. So we're gonna end our day back out on the beach. Okay. Our final beach stop of the day was at Public Beach Access Number 5, located just off the south end of Siesta Village. This beach access offers a short path to the beach <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us on Siesta Key. We hope you enjoyed spending the day with us. If you're familiar with the area and have any favorite spots that we missed during our visit, make sure to share them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let us know. And if you're interested in more St. Pete, Tampa Bay, and other Florida content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. Thanks for watching! That has some heat. <laughs> it is really good though. Oh, 10 tries, right? 10 tries the charm. Walk a little bit. You can play Marco Polo. Our mission to find cold beers and live music was a great success.